I said, three, you need a camera girl. Yes, I know, Jennifer, we had a camera girl. She's, uh, she's just really busy. Uh, just schedules just don't work out. So, um, yeah, if you're volunteering, come on in. <laughs> come on in, Jen. We could always use an extra hand. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Crystal? How you doing? What's your favorite Gen X moment, guys? That's what we're looking for today. Uh, you can write them down on here. Um, I forgot my headphones, so we've got, uh, I'm taking yours and you're taking those. <laughs> I figure it's fair. Um, no shut that, yeah. So yeah, Steve's here. What's up, y'all? Still waiting on your favorite, uh, Gen X moments. <laughs> Mike Infantino says, glad you can make it, Steve. Sorry. Are, are we not entertaining you? Are we not entertaining you? <laughs> that's that's Steve. That's that's him. <laughs> All right, so let's go back. Um, so no five minute movie today? No. Okay. I started to watch Point Blank. Point Blank. Point Break. Wow. I started to watch Point Break. Um, Wow, that's a horrible movie. <laughs> wow, is that overly over the top, like ridiculous? Uh, the stuff they do. Whoa, that was weird. Uh, the stuff they do and the acting is just horrible, like absolutely horrible from top to bottom. The only good thing about that movie is Delroy Lindo, and I'm not just saying that because he's a brother, but he's a good actor too. Who? What's he from? The black guy from uh, from everything. Get Shorty, <laughs> Broken Arrow. Uh, Get Shorty, he was the bad guy. I've never seen Get Shorty. Has he broken arrow? What? Uh, he was uh, one of the good guys in Broken Arrow. Oh, he was no. the main general due to uh, in Mission that. Control. That was sick. What was sick? What do you? What was sick, Jennifer? I, I see that you're saying that's sick, but I don't know what Am was I dancing? sick. Oh, is it? Is Steve dancing? You might have to move it over a little bit. So if you could sit right here, sit here, yeah, that way at least the folks can see it, right? We want to be able to see everybody. They, they, they don't want to see me. They want to see Steve. Look, this way you can see Steve, you can oh, see me. I, I look really tiny. He is tiny. Bitty, bitty, bitty. Oh. Get him. Squash him. Squash him, squash him, squash him. <laughs> his dance. Yes, I know. His dance was quite uh, sick. Or as the kids say, it was very lit. <laughs> I'm cool like that. Oh, if you want me to get wet, I can do that. No, after the show, <laughs> after the show, we will all get wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maddie Frank, what's up? What's up, my diamond brother? Maddie Frank and I were diamond dudes for the Well and Pirates back in the day. You remember when we had the Well and Pirates? Yeah. Matt, Matt uh, and I... Diamond dudes, I was thinking something else. No, 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 no. Not like Diamond Dave. Uh, <laughs> uh, we used to dance on the dugouts. We were, we were uh, vendors. You'd sell pop and stuff. And then uh, they started playing a Pee Wee Herman song. And we used to do like the butt of the Earl. And we'd dance on the dugout doing the Pee Wee Herman dance. <laughs> And then the following year, it uh, it evolved into us doing uh, the limbo. Do you remember? You ever remember the guy at the, the Sabers games? That's the same guy. They're all about. Yeah. He came there. We actually sold it. Like he was great guy. Great guy. Yeah. I miss that guy. I don't know why I'm talking to the microphone. The microphone's not on. Just force to have it, I guess. Mate, what's up, Mate? How you doing, brother? Mate. Slim. Do the dance. Right. What dance, Jen? Eric, wow, we've got a lot of viewers going on. What's going on, folks? How's everybody? Jeez. <laughs> How's everybody doing? And Jennifer, what dance do you want me to do? Let me give you a thumbs up there if I can without uh, screwing up the page. Your dugout dance. I am not doing the dugout dance. At the end of the show, I will do the dugout dance. If you guys stick around for the entire uh, broadcast, at the end of it all, I will do my Pee Wee Herman dugout dance. And so will Steve. I have no idea. This is all I got. No? <laughs> uh, I used to be able to drop the needle, but I'll probably break a hip trying to do that. How about Steve? Ah. Ah! 
He's magic, folks. <laughs> No. Pure magic. Look out, David Blaine. <laughs> Chris Angel ain't got nothing on this guy! And no, it's not a well thing that he was putting something up his nose either. <laughs> it's long and white. <laughs> Welcome back to Rat G, Ryan's All Things Geek, right here on 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening to us live online at CFBU. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to another edition of Ratchy Radio right here on 103.7 FM CFBU Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening live online anywhere in the world at CFBU.ca. That's right, folks. We are online and coming at you everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> um, thanks to those of you that are joining us today, uh, live streaming, as we do from time to time, uh, checking things out for the first time. And I am Ryan Fleming. I put the Ryan and Ryan's All Things Geek. And my brother over here, my brother from another mother. Yeah, I, I know. I just really said that. I can't believe I said it either. <laughs> the well and wing nut himself, Steve Lambert. What's up, brother? How's it going? Not bad. You? How was your week? It was a good week. So, I, right off the bat, let me just let all the fans know we are going to have to let you down a little bit. I know you. we promised you Steve's five-second movie review this week. Unfortunately, didn't get a chance to watch the movie last week, so... Yeah, you, you can uh, forward the hate mail to me, and I'll forward it to my girlfriend, because she fell asleep last night, so <laughs> we didn't make it to the movies. So, we are blaming it all on his girlfriend. I'm sorry, let me just change that. Steve is blaming that all on his <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> You're on your own, brother. You are so on your own. Um, so, yeah. So, today we've got, uh, like we have over the past few weeks, it seems we've got more and more people joining the conversation and joining the show. So, uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, we've got a great topic for today, and I'm loving the topic. My relentless uh, telemarketing is finally paying off. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I am so happy that Steve is calling, cold calling you all at home every day. <laughs> between 8 and 7 p.m. Um, but yeah, no, today we are talking about something that's uh, close to Steve, myself, and a lot of our listeners here, a lot of people that are our age, um, and we're talking about the age of Generation X. Uh, that's right. Generation X! Yeah, I should have went D-Gen. But <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, some of the greatest moments in Generation X history. Um, so uh, I've got a lot of notes for us to go through. Um, it's going to take us most of the show. Honestly, there are so many, so many moments uh, from Gen X. Gen X is uh, classified, depending on where you search, uh, anywhere from 1961 to 1985, or some places you see 1965 to 1980. All depends. When we were in high school, though, I remember it being like 1970 to 1980. Yeah. It was like a 10-year span, but whatever, that's okay. The more the merrier, I say. But there were a lot of big moments in Gen X history. We're going to focus on the 80s and 90s when most of us Gen Xers were uh, teenagers or young adults. Um, that seems to be where we made the biggest impact as opposed to right now where we're making a huge impact because right now Generation X, we're all the 40-year-olds and 50-year-olds. So, you know, we're the ones that are kind of running the show right now. And it's the new 20. And it is the new 20. And when we turn 50, it will be the new 20. <laughs> I hope you're noticing the pattern here, folks. <laughs> so, yes. Um, and thank you, Craig Elsich, for saying you are our overlord. And nobody in this room will argue that. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, so, yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, no five-second movie review, but we do, and we are bringing back the thing that you folks love the most. Um, it's our weekly segment that everyone else loves to sing along with us. And that's right. It is time for This Week in Geek. Yeah, I couldn't really dance to that. I was just waiting for the patent pending. I, I know. I was waiting for the patent pending. <laughs> you, you left me hanging, brother. You left me hanging. The first time first time we're here for you guys like this, and he leaves me hanging. That's what, I, that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> 
So yes, let's just get started with this week in geek. Um, that's our weekly roundup of the news in this world of uh, geekdom that we all uh, love so so much. And our news reporter, your very own well and wingnut himself, Steve Lambert. What have you got for us in the news today? Well, Hulk Hogan's going to be starring in a reboot of the 115 million dollar man. I'm sorry, what? No. He was just awarded one hundred and fifty. Oh, million I was going to say. Wait, I, it was already bad enough that I heard Mark Wahlberg was going to be playing doing that part. But yes, I did hear about him winning this lawsuit. Well, let us know a little bit more about that. Uh, I was uh, his uh, sex tape, as I air quote there. I guess uh, I I don't know. I've never seen it, so it was released by Gawker. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, so he uh, he yeah he was awarded one hundred and fifteen million dollars yesterday. Well, good for you, brother. Um, the way things have been going <laughs> for him, buy a lot of vitamins. Well, the way things have been going for him over the last year and a half, it's probably a, a really good thing. He probably really needed that money, <laughs> um, being let go by the WWE and uh, them just totally distancing themselves from him and him just seeming to step on his own feet every chance he gets. Yeah, so. no doubt. Oh well, but hey, good for you, uh, Huckster. Uh, what else you got for us, <laughs> brother? Well, uh, we've got uh, an interesting uh, thing out of Microsoft. They said that they're going to try and introduce uh, cross-play between PS4 and Xbox One and, P- and, and PC. PC. Yes. Uh, now, there's already a uh, cross-platform game for PC and Xbox. Yes. And PC. And, P- and PS4 yes. as well. Um, it's just, a, I think, a 2D scroller, though. I don't think it's anything uh, great. But this is huge news. This is huge news. This is huge. Now, it, the, the argument over... Xbox or PlayStation or PC is finally done. It's done. There's there's no Xbox or PS4 or PC. It's all of them. We can finally all get along. <laughs> I love it. I love any time I can get a Rodney King in there. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? <laughs> so yeah, you got to be excited though. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends have uh, a, lo- a lot of my friends that coaxed me over to Xbox when I was a PlayStation guy. Are now, all back to PS4. That's right. And uh, you know what? I've I've stayed stayed course. I, I just bought my Xbox One a few months back, and mm-hmm. I, I'm happy. I'm happy with the the games. I'm happy with the the sports games, is which is mostly what I play. Yeah, me too. You know, this so. is good because now I can finally kick your butt on hockey. <laughs> Sabers versus Red Wings. Oh, it's on! It's on like Donkey Kong. You, you better uh, edit a few of your players. Uh, uh, Jack Eichel. Oh, sorry. How are you guys doing right now? You guys are just barely making the playoffs. We're, we're, in there. we're holding one, one on. Point, one holding point. on. Philadelphia Hold lost today to Pittsburgh. Thank you very much, Penguins. Yeah, that's right. It's okay. You keep cheering on that eighth place finish that you guys get and that draft pick, that great draft pick that garners. Yeah. Hey, our playoff streak is older than half the teams in the league. <laughs> this is true. Um, all right. So what else you got for us this week, buddy? Uh, well, uh, the uh, the governor. It's uh. Oh, no. The governor was down under. <laughs> so what was Arnie doing in Aussie land? He was down in Australia hosting the Arnold Classic Sports and Fitness Festival in Melbourne and took a chance to talk with uh, Australia's Channel 9 to tell them that Terminator 6 is happening. Oh, my good Lord, no. <laughs> I thought for sure that... He'll be back. They had the franchise killer in the cast last time, Jay, Jay Courtney, who just seems to be... He's the anti-Rock, is what I said today earlier. I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, the Rock is the person you call. When your franchise is about to die, you call The Rock, and you bring him on, and next thing you know, your franchise is saved, and you know, you're, you're in for another three sequels. Jay Courtney, however... Every movie that guy goes in that's a blockbuster fails. That's why I'm I'm really I'm worried to see what happens with Suicide Squad because he plays Captain Boomerang in it. I realize it's a really really small role, but he had a well not a small role, but it's a it's a supporting character. But the same could be said with I Frankenstein and Die Hard in Russia yeah. and Terminator Genesis. Like, I'm sorry, he is the franchise killer. At least that's what I believe. <laughs> and what I believe goes. We all know this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what I'm else you got for you. us? Well, uh, to piggyback on that, uh, we heard earlier this week that uh, Indiana Jones is coming back. Number five. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about this? You know, I, I, st- I must confess, I still have not seen the one with Sean Connery in it or the last one, Crystal Skulls. Oh, wow. The one with Sean Connery was actually... It- it fit. 
it fit totally in with uh, the the original too. Um, and River Phoenix as a young Indiana Jones was great. Seeing how he got the scar on his lip and stuff, um, it was a really good movie. The best was uh, Sean Connery. Uh, I have them both on my PVR right now. I just, Sean Connery busts uh, Indy in front of uh, one of his, I think, in front of a girlfriend or something, and she's like, "Indiana, what's the name of our dog?" <laughs> <laughs> you find junior junior dad please what does it always mean this this junior that's his name henry jones junior like indiana we named the dog indiana maybe go home now please the dog <laughs> you are named after the dog <laughs> got a lot of fond memories of that dog <laughs> yes i know my sean connery gets better and better each week Trousers. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Uh, what do you got next for us, buddy? Uh, well, Amber Heard has uh, been announced uh, to be playing a role in the new Aquaman movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Justice you, League, she's going to be in as well. Everybody else might know her from other stuff, but I only know her from Pineapple Express. So. And she was also in, uh, I think her big <laughs> first role was in Zombieland. Oh, that's right. At the very beginning, she's, right. the she the, she's the neighbor. the yeah, neighbor. Yeah, the hot neighbor that turns into the zombie uh, at yeah. the beginning. Um, I'm excited for Aquaman. I am too, just because of Jason Momoa. Just because of Jason Momoa. Now, this is what I, I'm not a big fan of, though, because Jason Momoa is, he's a big, tough-looking dude. Um, but he looks like a biker. And they just announced that uh, DC will be doing a Lobo movie. Lobo is an intergalactic bounty hunter who looks like uh, 1980s Hell's Angel. Uh, like a machete. He looks a lot. He looks a lot like Machete. Honestly, um, have you? Do you know who Lobo is? Or, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a lot. Danny Trejo came out not long ago saying he wanted to play him, but he's like seventy-seven or something like that now. He's too old for the role. Um, but he would have been perfect a few years ago. My choice, though, it should have been Momoa, who's Aquaman. But because Momoa is Aquaman and they can't use him in both roles, my choice is uh, Ryan Hurst. Oh, yeah. The guy who played Opie. Sons of, Sons of Anarchy. Exactly. Yeah. And he's in Outsiders now. I don't know if anyone's seen Outsiders, but that's an excellent show. Uh, along the same vein of uh, Sons of Anarchy for that type of intensity and drama. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, but, yeah, excited. I, I'm just excited for DC to finally... You know, I, I mean, even though Spider-Man and the Hulk were always my two favorite growing up, and they're obviously Marvel, yeah. Justice League was was my show, you know? So oh, I, yeah. I'm excited for the Batman versus Superman. I'm excited for Aquaman. I'm excited for for Flash. Yes. Now, oh, you don't watch the Flash TV show, I don't, though. No, no, no. no. Um, the Flash movie, which is going to be based on the same Flash, because there's multiple Flashes in the in comic book lore, you know, Barry Allen, mm -hmm. Jay Garrick, uh, Wally West, and so on and so forth, Bart Allen as well. Um, but the movie version is going to be a lot darker than what the actual TV show is, because that's what the movie cinematic, uh, DC Cinematic Universe really is. It's really, they've really ad uh, adopted the Christopher Nolan dark times and dark senses uh, of the show, of those movies. Um, I don't mind a more serious tone. I just don't want Superman to be serious. Like, I, and I don't mean that he should never be a serious person, but he should he shouldn't be as grumpy and um, acting like the world's against him all the time, or acting. A lot of times he he acts very uh, indifferent when it comes to saving people. Uh, in the first Man of Steel, his dad tells him, you know, oh maybe you should have just let those kids drown in the bus instead of letting them know that you had super. <laughs> This is the Kents, <laughs> you know. This is these well, are somebody think of the children, and that's who the Kents are, though. That's my whole point. They are the the what is it, the church lady, you know? <laughs> um, and that's that's who Superman is. He's supposed to be uh, uncomparable, you know. He's supposed to be that person that you always look up to, and people are like, "Oh, I need a superhero I could relate to." Well, that's what Batman's for, and you shouldn't even be able to relate to Batman because none of us are billionaires who had our parents gunned down in front of us. Saying that you want to be relatable to a demigod, alien, like Superman, just to me, it's silly. It's like when people say, I want a more realistic superhero. It's a superhero. What do you mean more realistic? Come on, folks. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I digress. Why don't we move on to the next story? I get all, all the clamp. <laughs> 
Sorry to get you all worked up there. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> these Superman fanboys, these new Man of Steel fanboys, they kill me, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, it looks like we might get a little bit of information as, as to the release date, possibly, of Red Dead Redemption 2, which is, as far as rumors are concerned, is being going to be called Legends of the West, and that is actually going to be a prequel. Oh, right on. Um, so we're looking to hear something about that at E3, which is in June in L.A. So Nice. Time for Steve and I to get our tickets to E3. <laughs> and anyone looking to sponsor those tickets, <laughs> you just send those. We'll, we'll fly coach. <laughs> Steve will fly coach. <laughs> Steve will fly coach. I will fly first class because I don't like flying. <laughs> I'm, I'd be like B.A. Brackus. <laughs> Uh, anyways, go on, brother. I uh, just saw one last story, something uh, fun people can uh, go and check out maybe after the show because uh, you don't want to miss the miss the rest of the show, of course. Of course but, not. But uh, a little video I seen uh, just before I left the host today. Uh, it's a video of a woman disappearing at an airport. I don't know if you've seen this. No, I haven't. It's uh, from a Danish television network called uh, TV2, and they were interviewing the coach of the national women's handball team. And as they're interviewing them, there's a woman talking to another woman, pushing a cart. And as she walks past her and finishes talking to her, she passes by the woman. And when she passes by, the woman's gone. It's not like a video edit or anything? It, like, it could just be one of those things, like that it, Zach, it, that YouTube it, guy, it, it, Zach, it, it, whatever. It very well could be, but... Because I don't think it's that hard for, for people to do that. The hard part is getting everybody else to corroborate the story to make it look like it's real, right? Mm. All the witnesses and stuff there. Um, Craig Elsich says that he'd pay for our tickets, but he has a feeling uh, his data overage watching watching us may cost him more than he expects. <laughs> you think your data's <laughs> going through the roof? Imagine mine right now. <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah, so that's it for our news for this week, that's brother. That's it. Right on. Well, there you go, folks. That was This Week in Geek. Patent pending. See? Got him trained. Here's your cookie. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> so, uh, as we said, uh, Rat G Radio Show here. Coming at you live like we do every week. Um, this week we are talking about Generation X. We want to talk about uh, all the things that are great about this ge that generation, our generation. Um, I'm not doing the dance yet, Jennifer Lynn Ringma. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so we want to talk about your favorite moments and uh, the things that stuck out for you uh, throughout history, especially, you know, those times of the 80s and 90s where most of us Gen Xers were young teenagers or young adults. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> this is great. I'm loving the interaction we're getting today. Uh, thank you, Daryl Harrison. Um, uh, give me my wallet back. <laughs> <laughs> I've got yours. It's all right. <laughs> So, yeah, so when we come back from the break, that's what we are going to get into. We're going to get into uh, – I'm going to try to figure out a way to get into your answers and stuff. I'm not sure I can get to them without uh, our Internet access here, so I do apologize. But I do have a lot, a lot, of lot of notes about Generation X for us to all go through. Plus, Steve's got his, uh, his list of his Gen X favorite moments of all time. I don't know if it's really of all time, if it's just a certain generation, you know, period. Of all time, of that time. Yes, of all time, in that time. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. That's what I do. That's why Steve's my partner. Not like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I'm going to stop talking now because I'm digging a hole. <laughs> but, yeah, so we will uh, we will be getting to uh, all your Generation X uh, comments. Well, what what we can, at least, what we can find. And uh, after the break, and, of course... Uh, you know, get into uh, what our great moments were. And like I said, I'm just going to highlight a few moments for you. I do want to remind everybody, though, that you are listening to the Rat G Radio Show right here on 103.7 FM CFBU Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening live online anywhere in the world at CFBU.ca, folks. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Um, uh, if you're a friend of mine, you're probably watching us uh, online. Uh, so you can do that as well. Just want to remind everybody, though, here at 103.7 FM, it is a listener-supported campus-based community radio station. Our programs are produced and hosted by volunteers like Steve and myself. Um, if you like what you hear here and you would like to support our efforts, why not consider making a donation? You can use the handy-dandy donation button on our homepage at cfbu.ca. 
and hey, uh, it's from fans like you that really help us out and keep us going. So uh, with that, I just want to say thanks. And uh, remember, folks, we will be right back after these messages. Are you? After these messages, we'll be right back. Hi, Steve, Ryan. This is, this is what we do during commercial breaks. Oh, if there's someone on there that's an administrator from the page that's watching right now, Johnny Knapp, uh, Will Mahoney, anybody, can you do me a favor? Click the share button and share this on to our Rat G page as well, please, so that uh, our fans can get uh, in on the action. I do want to apologize to anybody who did send us uh, things earlier, uh, answers, but unfortunately can't get to them, so I'm just going to have to talk about everything on my own because, you know, it's what I do. All right, welcome back to Ratchy Radio right here on 103.7 FM, CFBU, Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening live online anywhere in the world at cfbu.ca. I'm your host, Ryan Fleming. I put the Ryan at Ryan's All Things Geek. And joining me as he does from week to week, my co-host, you know you love him. You know he's crazy. <laughs> the Welland Wingnut himself. Still waiting on his first piece of hate mail, by the way. Steve Lambert. And I put the Steve in Steve Douglas Lambert. Douglas? Douglas. It's out there. Douglas. It's out there. Uh, I, I got nothing. I, I, I own it. <sighs> <laughs> so. There, there's a story behind it, but I'm, I'm not going to get into that. It's because you were named after our first, uh, or not our first prime minister, but one of our prime ministers. Sure. Douglas? Wasn't yeah. there a Douglas? Yeah. Somebody? Yeah, we'll somebody. go with that. Yeah. Yeah, no. Goes to show what I know. Um, n- no, I wasn't in the movie Top Gun, Craig. Um, I know that I am beautiful and look like I could be in a movie like Top Gun with all those beautiful people, Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer, as they played volleyball in their jeans. I was thinking more like Marilyn Manson, the beautiful people, the beautiful people. Right. <laughs> uh, to quote our buddy, Dr. Steele, right, <laughs> right. So, folks, Gen X, talk to me. What are you liking about Gen X? What are we thinking? Um, Gen X, let's start off with what defines Gen X. Um, I looked it up a few places, Wikipedia, Google. Um, They all gave me different kind of time frames. Uh, General concession seems to be somewhere between 1960 and 1980. Some places say 1965 to 1980. Others say 1961 to 1981. Um, Steve and I were talking earlier. When we were growing up uh, in the 90s, we always considered 1970 to 1980 to kind of be uh, Generation X. Uh, But, you know, it is what it is. Everybody wants to jump in with the cool kids. I understand. (laughs) It's all right. We all know we were the cool kids. Just watch Reality Bites and you'll see how cool we were in the 90s. (laughs) I liked Reality Bites. I'm not going to lie. At the time, it was a pretty decent movie. It, it, It spoke to us as a generation. Oh, the music, Fair Galley, you got it, brother. Uh, the music was just fantastic in the 90s. Or, well, geez, the 80s and the 90s. A little bit of the 80s stuff was a little rough, though. It, it depends who you ask or what ex- genre you're thinking about, but uh, yeah. I mean, to each their own. Come on, everybody loved hair music. I mean, you, you look at a band like Ministry, who came from a song like uh, Every Day is Halloween in the early 80s, which was like, I mean, almost Depeche Mode. Right. To the band they are today. I mean, they, they're they basically the godfathers of skinhead in, music. In, in, industrial metal. <laughs> so, Aren't I mean, they skinhead music still? <laughs> yeah, some might say that. Yeah. yeah just me. It's <laughs> a reason why I never went to those concerts. <laughs> called intelligence <laughs> not wanting to die <laughs> uh, but yeah no there there were a lot of a lot of bands that evolved that you know started off you know poppy like pop kind of music type that evolved into what would be like their own type of rock or grunge or whatever and grunge was another big part of the movement as well, well even, uh, the, even the hair bands of the 80s evolving from I guess what would you would call uh, the new wave of British metal in the 70s right and MTV let's okay let's there, there's so many different spot, stop, uh, spots to get started with MTV though I think because 
what they say is what I read as well is there's two different eras within Generation X. There's the boomer busters. So, uh, and that was like the 1960 to the 1970, and mm-hmm. they were the ones that busted all the baby boomers. Um, and then there was the MTV generation, which was us. And MTV started 1984. Um, a lot of things started in 1984. The, the day video killed the radio star. Which was actually, as you know, was the very first song. Um, and it was 1981, sorry, August 1st, 1981. Um, first video was Video Killed the Radio Star Do you, by the Buggles. Do you know what the second song was? Uh, I want to say Twisted Sister. Uh, but I'd be wrong. You would so be... I, so I'm going to say Michael Jackson's Thriller. You'd be even more wrong. Okay, I'm going to stop guessing that. <laughs> <laughs> the song that followed that was uh, Pat Benatar's You Better Run. Oh. Yeah. That so. was going to be my third guess. Really? Yeah. I don't believe I'm, I'm a big Pat Benatar I fan, don't if you know me. Um... Jay Farragalli puts it out there too uh, and this fits in with the MTV motif as well was uh, the music that was all groundbreaking at the time was rap and metal um, and there were so many um, I'm kind of all over the place in my notes here so I'm trying to keep up with us as I keep up with <laughs> the people that are uh, kind of commenting at the same time though but yeah uh, we had the digital revolution not too long after that you know and it came from you know we had cell phones the first cell phone, I think, was uh, well, 1984. 1984, a lot of stuff happened. And everyone knows there was the book, the George Orwell book, 1984, where, you know, that was supposed to be our dystopian future. 1984, I don't know if you remember, but the biggest commercial of that year was at the Super Bowl by Steve Jobs uh, and uh, Kurt Wozniak. Steve Wozniak. Steve Wozniak. I was like, yeah. are they both Steves? Yeah, all right, I'll be all right. Because there's a Chris Wozniak as, a, as an artist that I know, a comic book artist. I'll be all right. Anyway, so uh, the Waz and the Schnoz, or uh, Jobs, <laughs> um, they came out with that Apple commercial during the Super Bowl. It was the very first big Super Bowl commercial. Do you remember that one? Um, it was the one where everyone's sitting in the room all watching the IBMs, and there it was like uh, everyone was chained like to their desks and stuff and then you just see this blonde girl coming and she's wearing like really short shorts and she's carrying a sledgehammer and she just runs and throws it through the screen like that was the big thing there's like do you want to live in the George Orwell future or 1984 doesn't have to be like 1984 and that was the very first big Mac commercial it was it was awesome um so yeah, and that that kind of started the boom for everything when it came to uh, Silicon Valley, when it came to uh, computers, like personal computers. The the discman. The discman. <laughs> that, that never skipped, even no. if you, even if you bought the one with anti skip. Well, let's talk about Walkmans, <laughs> like uh, the tape cassette Walkmans. Uh, kids today will never understand a pencil with a tape cassette. What do I need that for? Well, because you know your ribbon's gonna run. <laughs> but yeah, so there there was a, a lot of stuff back then um, that we had to deal with or that, you know, a lot of things today that all started with our generation. Um, the easiest one, the easiest one for me to go to, especially it's most uh, relatable to all of us here, would be Pong. The Atari system came out with Pong. Uh, and when Pong came out, it just blew us all away. Because at that, before Pong, we had arcades, and we loved arcades. We spent all our money on arcades. If we got 10 bucks in allowance, 950 of that went to the arcade. If I found two dimes and a nickel, I was on my way to the arcade. Ex- Wizards Castle and <laughs> Wellen, man. We spent so much time there. I grew up in Shirkston as well, so uh, we had the arcade in Shirkston that we'd go to all the time. So, yeah, uh, arcades were great, but when Pong came out, it revolutionized everything. And I think my grandparents thought ahead of time, like, my God, I don't have to give my grandson, like, 10 bucks a day or whatever a day. I can buy him a system. Sure, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but it's going to save me a lot in the long run. And, mm-hmm. oh, my God, did it ever. Because uh, we played that from Atari, ColecoVision, 
Sega Genesis, Dreamcast. My, my first one was uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System. My neighbors had Pong, and I had another friend that had Coleco. Yeah. And uh, I had the tabletops. Do you remember tabletops? No, I don't think they, they were basically miniature arcades that you could you could sit at your desk or at your kitchen table, and it was like a little tiny mini arcade game. And I, you could it had the like the arcade style controls and a little tiny screen. No way. Yeah, I had uh, I had Cubert, Donkey Kong. And they, they they were a lot of fun. That's they, pretty they, awesome. They, I they, didn't were, know they were the original Game Boys. Big, but Big yeah, fair size. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I think they came out with like candy later. That came in like a little makeshift tabletop uh, video games, like you're talking about. I could be wrong though. <laughs> I probably am. Let's just talk yeah. about it that way. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So that's the way it goes. Um, and thank you to everybody that's joining in. I, I, there is a ton of you. Um, my daughter just joining in. Daughter, stop texting me while I'm on the air. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you there's just that. Announced that she's on, so she's gone now. Yeah, I know. She's like, I'm. I can't admit that I was listening to my father's show. <laughs> He's not cool. She's not wrong. <laughs> she is not wrong at all. Um, bottom of the hour. Uh, just want to remind everybody that you are listening to 103.7 FM CFBU Brock University Radio, or you're listening live online at cfbu.ca. You be checking us out live on live stream as well. Um, just like I said before, uh, we are a community support. Uh, sorry, a community campus-based radio station, uh, supported by our listeners. Our programs are produced and hosted by volunteers like Steve and myself, and all the other uh, DJs and people behind the scenes that you don't see, um, or here, or here. Uh, but if you do like what you hear, you like what you're seeing, uh, do us a favor. Uh, you want to support our efforts. Make a donation if you can, if you wouldn't mind considering that. You can use the donation button on our site at cfbu.ca. And like I said before, it's uh, listeners like you that keep us all going. So thank you. And peep the shirt. Peep the shirt. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so so that's basically it, you know. Um, and as I did say to you guys earlier, I do apologize because we are trying the live streaming thing at the same time. I can't get to all of your your questions uh, that you or your answers that you put up there for us. So I do apologize. But we're going to kind of go through a few different points in history on here. And if you do have any comments, put them up here on the live stream. I've already taken a few from you guys up there, and I don't mind taking more. Um, so there's a few other things I'd like to get to. Um, one of the biggest things, and we talked about this, we touched on this a little bit earlier. Okay, so punk music was basically the late 70s, early 80s. But what punk music led us into was probably one of the greatest moments in music history. And not everybody liked it, but it was one of the most defining moments. And that was 1991. The Seattle grunge scene. All those garage bands, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. It smells like grunge, mu grunge music. <laughs> it really does smell. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so 1991, Smells Like Teen Spirit came out. Uh, not long after that came Reality Bites, the movie. Uh, that kind of, those two, the, that movie and the grunge scene went hand in hand together. Because a lot of the grunge scene were the people that you saw in Reality Bites. Reality Bites was one of the very first movies for our generation that we saw that really spoke to us, that was talking about the same things we were talking about, worried about the same things we were worried about. No longer were we from... We weren't the generation that came from the million-dollar families or the proper families, you know. We were the first generation where almost everybody came from a divorced home. You know, like you were a rarity, you know. Um, like when we were growing up, what you'd hear, okay, there's a neighbor up the street, uh, that family got divorced. Oh, uh, you know, that's not too much. And then the next week you hear another family, another family. And it just seemed to keep, you know, going and going. Princess Di and, and Prince Charles, think of how, how influential that family was to the entire world. Like people still talk about that wedding to today and everybody was looking at them to be the beacon of hope for uh, the stable family. And what happened? Just like everybody else, divorced. Um, so movies like Reality Bites really did talk to us because a lot of those kids came from broken homes 
they were just graduating high school, uh, graduating college, and then finding there wasn't any work out there to go to. You know, all the factory jobs were gone. Um, so I believe Reality Bites was a really big part of our, our uh, history and a really good telltale sign, um, especially of the early 90s and what it was for a lot of us growing up. Um, could just be me, but I don't know. <laughs> and uh, the movie Singles, people like to compare that to Reality Bites. That movie just bit. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. It was a cheap knockoff. It's like watching Olympus Has Fallen and then White House Down. Well, they both kind of suck, but, you know, one really sucks. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> um, now, we talked earlier about the digital age and about all the things that uh, came about about that. Uh, one of the things that uh, started in the 80s and the 90s was when computers first came out, not everybody bought computers. You were, like, if you were to walk up to somebody and say, like just the average person on the street and say, do you want a computer? Even if you were to offer it to them, most people are going to say, no, what am I going to do with that? Because back then, to get on the computer, you had to basically write a code. You know, if you want to go on IRC chat and stuff like that, you had to know the basic code just to get on. And people didn't want to do that. This was way before uh, the Google. Your dot-coms. Yeah, exactly. Before your dot-coms and your Yahoo searches and stuff like that, you know. Yes, everything was available on the Internet, but there was no specific place just to find that you know, one search area. Um, that yeah. didn't... Go ahead. I, I remember going to my friend's house to play the... Uh, like, they had the uh, word-based uh, choose-your-own-adventure games. Yes. I, I mean, oh, there, I there was no those. pictures. There was no graphics. It was just, uh, you have entered a cave. Uh, there's two directions. Choose left, choose right. And which one are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, and, and that was that was a pretty amazing... Those were amazing books, too, though, because just trying to think about having to write one of those, you got to think about all these different options. Plus... Oh, it, it's it just it was so much. I, I couldn't even imagine having to try to write one of those things. I, I always held the when when I was dealing with the books. Obviously, I, you always held the page, right? And you, you switch it. Yeah. Oh wait, no, I didn't choose that one. I didn't choose that one. I'm going back. I, I didn't die. Back. I didn't die. I didn't lose all my gold. I did not lose all my gold. <laughs> I'm going back a page. I remember that from uh, Mr. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Stark's class. Oh wow, Plymouth School. Yeah, wow. reading those books. Rocking the old school there, buddy. <laughs> Um, I just want to kind of keep going on with the the technology a little bit. Um, we th so we talked a bit about um, where it went to, and I mentioned how everything changed on the internet once we got Google. Things did not change. Things didn't change until we had that search engine, because there was you had to know the website to everything to go to something, and you just you just didn't know everything. It was impossible to know them all. Until Google came along, I think Yahoo might have been a little bit before them, but uh, they I came and they perfected right. it. Um, September fifteenth, nineteen ninety-seven. Of course, Larry Page and uh, Sergei, Sergei Brin uh, both formed Google. Uh, they started out and they were just they were just looking. They're like one day they're like, wouldn't it be great if there's one place we can go to find everything? And that one idea that seems so so simple turned into a mega billion dollar company. Before that, it was called the World Book Encyclopedias. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was called the local library. <laughs> Kids are like, what's that? Is that where I go yeah, to get Do you remember DVDs? them selling the World Books at the grocery stores? And no. You, you, you'd buy, have to buy, a, you know, every month there'd be a new volume at the grocery store. I, I think I remember more, there was like an encyclopedia of the month or something like that too, like, or, you know, that my grandparents mm -hmm. used to subscribe to. Um, very crazy, very crazy. But, you know, it's the way we had to do things before we had all this technology. Thank you, Generation X. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You are welcome, millennials and baby boomers and anyone else out there because we did it all. No. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, so there was the Google. There was Steve Jobs and Wozniak uh, back in 84, as we said, that started off Apple, uh, you know, in direct competition to IBM, uh, which was great. Um but I think we don't get any of that technology at all, at all, without one important TV show. What show is that? You're going to have to wait till after the commercial to find out. <laughs> so, yes, folks, reminding you, you are listening to the Radgy Radio Show right here on 103.7 FM, CFBU Brock University Radio, or you can be listening live online anywhere in the world at cfbu.ca. 
You can find us on Ryan's All Things Geek on Facebook. You can join the Rat G Radio group as well. Or look us up on Twitter. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, on Twitter, my handle or our handle is Zeus, like the Greek god. Zeus Rat G. Or you can look us up on YouTube as well, and that's uh, Rat G. Just search Rat G. You'll find us. We're there. And uh, with that, folks, we will be right back. Kids. Kind of all over the place. I bet you can figure out what the show is. Yeah. Well, look at all the stuff that's been invented. I've got to start bringing my theremin. Your theremin? Yeah. You know what, though? I wanted to talk about that with about the uh, hip hop from 69 or 1979 on Mr. Rogers. It was brought out the theremin machine. And then uh, a couple years later came rap. All right, welcome back to the Rat G Radio Show right here on 103.7 FM, CFBU, Brock University, or you can be listening live online anywhere in the world at cfbu.ca. I am your host, Ryan Fleming. I put the Ryan and Ryan's All Things Geek, and with me, as usual, is the well and wingnut himself, Mr. Steve Lambert, who puts... Hi, everybody! He puts the Dr. Nick and Steve. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Nick! <laughs> So, yes, you know what? What another great example of Generation X. Yes. I didn't even think you of that. And I no one's there? even. Yeah, you totally did that on purpose. <laughs> he did not. He did not. But The Simpsons. The Simpsons is, is total Gen X. Like, uh, started, what, 1991 on the Tracy Ullman show? Meet Homer Simpson. Dun, 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 Marge, his wife. This is this is this is what I deal with every week, every week. One of these weeks, I'm getting a new co-host. I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. Daughter Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yes, The Simpsons were a very very huge part. TV uh, in a whole as a whole was huge for Generation X. We started the Saturday morning cartoon craze. We also ended it. Thanks thanks uh, in a large part to Saved by the Bell love that show. I love that show, but I hate them for what they did to Saturday morning cartoons. They also brought us uh, Hang Time and uh, California, Dream. California Dreams was great. <laughs> Don't wake Don't me wake up me if up I'm dreaming. California Dreams. Oh, oh, oh. My dream is done. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. We'll be all right. Uh, but yeah, so there was a lot of things like that. Uh, Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, from, we evolved from Saturday morning cartoons to the Saturday morning live action cartoons, almost of Saved by the Bell and Hang Time and uh, California Dreams. And now it's nothing but uh, paid advertising. So thanks a lot, millennials. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally blaming hey, we, millennials. We, we giveth for that. and we taketh. <laughs> this is right. No, no, we giveth, they taketh. That's all I've got. Um, some other important moments in history I want to get to because we've only got uh, 20 minutes left. Um, so the Cold War. A-, a lot of us grew up... Uh, no, not temperature, Steve. <sighs> the Cold War be- between Russia and the States. Um, there's the... You know, there was the movie The China Syndrome and stuff like that. So we were always f- uh, afraid of nuclear fallout and nuclear war. Um, but the Cold War was something where us as kids, I don't know about Steve, but myself, I found a lot of times you're just looking up in the sky because you were, there was movies like Red Dawn. uh, Spies Like Us. Spies Like (laughs) Us. Spies Like Us, not as much. But, you know, that that, that put that fear into us that that made us think that this could really happen, you know. Um, Every week, Reagan and Gorbachev going back and forth after each other. It was scary. The 80s for me was very much about fear. I mean, like you said, with all seriousness, uh, you had the Cold War at the beginning of the 80s. You had AIDS. Yes, At the end of the 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, not at the end, but I mean, at the forefront, you know. Yeah, and and that was a crazy thing, too. Um, Just to think... Think of where, what we've evolved from from there, too, whereas AIDS was thought of as uh, only a homosexual disease, where you've seen 
there was television a, commercials come out and telling you to stay away from homosexuals. Well, there was like the that. first boy that uh, contracted. I can't remember his name, but uh, the, basically the school didn't want him there. People, didn't, uh, other parents didn't want to send their kids to school with this kid, mm-hmm. and he was the kid that broke the stigma. Oh yeah, he broke broke that social stigma that it was you know like you said a, a homosexual disease. I mean, it was you know blood transfusions. Yeah. I mean. And it was and it was one of those things that uh, people didn't really pay attention to until Rock Hudson died, mm. when Rock Hudson contracted AIDS and died. Because not a lot of people, like he was in the closet for a long time too, right? A lot of people didn't know unless you were on set, you know. But um, yeah, it was crazy. But to get back to the Cold War thing, we've had a couple people uh, chime in on some movies that were big parts of it. Uh, Fair Galley's right, uh, Rambo and Commando were a couple of movies that spring to mind right away. Um, I want to throw in, we talked Red Dawn, um, Rocky IV. Rocky IV did a lot for relationships between the states and Russia getting better. Rocky IV was a celebrated movie in Russia, where at the end of this movie, Russians were booing their own countryman and chanting Rocky's name. If I could change, we all you could change, we all could change. Yo, Adrian. No, that was the first movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it did a lot as well. Um, I'd say that did almost as much as uh, Reagan telling, uh, who was it, to Mr. tear down Gorbachev. those walls. Oh, that's tear right. down tear these down walls. This wall. um, the Day After, that was another movie that just sent everybody, and especially for myself, I was like four or five at the time, not even understanding basically what was going on except for, there's there might be a war happen and the result might be what happened in this movie the day after tomorrow and for us kids it was scary like it was a very scary time but thankfully we got past all that because i do believe generation x was the first generation to say listen homosexual black white chinese whatever we're all the big blue dot remember there was a special called the big blue dot and they showed a picture of the earth and we as generation x saw it for the first time we're like Look how small this place is. And we're all part of this big blue dot, this big blue marble. And uh, and I think that's where we started to see a lot of us come together as one. Um, we're still working hard on that, and sometimes it seems like we're heading backwards. But, you know, uh, I, I, mean, I think we, we did a lot. We've come a long way as far as, uh, I think, race relations and uh, just all that. Oh, exactly. Now, before the break, uh, we were talking about the digital revolution. And I tease that uh, we wouldn't have had any of the stuff we have today if it wasn't for one show. And, of course, what show could that be than anything else but uh, Star Trek? Uh, You know, great show. Uh, Now, we can talk about all the technology that it brought to us. Flip phones. uh, Walk into a grocery store. You never open a door. Like, they all automatically open for you. Actually, the Egyptians did that first, but... Mm, Stargate? They, 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 no, I mean the Egyptians. They had steam technology, pa- power, like automatic oh, wow. opening doors. Yeah, I did not know that. The more you know, Yo Joe. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. So there was that, um, but still, there you still can't deny a lot of the other things. Even you look at Star Trek: The Next Generation, Picard working on an iPad, like you know, ten years before the iPad had even come out. Um, there's a tricorder they're saying that's gonna that's almost ready to put out on market now. So. There's a lot of things that we've gained from them. But more than that was if you looked at the show Star Trek, just look at the diversity on the show. Now, we can talk about all the different races on there and how great that was. Let's talk about the fact that we had an officer that was a black woman. Like, women were at the forefront here. Like, sure, they weren't a captain yet, but, um, you know, that was only a matter of time in the isolated case there. But and then there's William Shatner and his green girlfriend. Right? Bill Shatner did a lot for race relations. <laughs> On Earth and off of Earth. I'm just saying. <laughs> Again, send all your hate mail to wellandwingnut at gmail.com. Wellandwingnut at gmail.com. <laughs> he will love it. He may even tattoo it somewhere. <laughs> Depending how good it is. <laughs> and yes, I just made that decision for him. <laughs> so yeah, Star Trek was uh, played a pivotal role we'll in where we are. To do it. We can get James to do it. I'm still waiting for James to uh, pop in here. He was uh, supposed to be uh, giving us some comments today, but he could be busy at the tattoo shop. So, yeah. So, uh, there was all of that. Um, The Apollo 11, like, we were 
grade one, grade yeah, two very, at the time. But I still remember that one vividly just because uh, my grandparents, just their reaction to it, you know, and they, we, I think we watched it in school, actually. Yeah, for me, for me, it was Challenger. I was, uh, I was a kid who only lived a couple blocks away from my school. I went home every day for lunch, and I mm-hmm. remember rushing home because like, space launches were a big thing still, you know. Yep. And they would wait to noon till you know people were in front of their televisions and I and you know seeing it take off and was that the Challenger that exploded or I was, thought it was Apollo eleven no, oh no Ch- Apollo eleven was the first one that landed on the moon and Challenger yes. was the one that blew up I'm yes, sorry that my, was my one mistake with the first teacher in space the Challenger yes right yeah. right and I still remember the Punky Brewster episode that aired after that where uh, where they showed just how how basically how the rest of us all dealt with it because they were in school watching it at the same time too. Mm-hmm. Um, And that was, I think, one of the first times I saw on a show where they did something like that, where they took a real-life event that The the full host moment, as it's been coined today. Yeah, (laughs) right? You you just don't don't see that very often. But I remember back then just thinking, you know, how how big that was. And it was, like I said, it was was not so much the effect it had on me, but the effect that I saw it had on my grandparents and, and the adults around us, you know, that made you realize it was a big deal um so yeah that was that was another big thing from our time uh we talked about the digital revolution um we don't have the digital revolution without uh nerds larry page sergey brin steve jobs wozniak uh bill gates you know the nerds are the ones who gave us all this great technology and I don't think we get a lot of the love that we had for the nerds if it wasn't for all the hate that we had in the movie, <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, I, I think this was another seminal movie. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. He's that guy. He's that guy. Um, I think it was another uh, movie where uh, it, it, it had an empowering effect where they may not have planned for it to work out that way, but it, it, it was that step that... Uh, nerds were looking for that that thing that uh, made them you know equals not even equals in some parts it let us know that they were better than us you know we are better than us but you know what I mean like in in high school they might have been picked on but that movie let us know that once school was over we'll be working for them you know and it was true and yeah I always treat a nerd nice like I did just saying just saying I'm not saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, we talked about arcades and Pong, then Atari. Um, 1984, uh, The Brick. Do you remember The Brick? Do you remember the movie Wall Street? I remember the movie Wall Street, yep. Gordon Gecko standing on the beach holding the Zach Morris Oh yes. The brick is what uh, what it was uh, affectionately referred to. It was the Dymatech 8000X. Uh, <laughs> um, and cell phones back then were thought of something for only the elite. The Gordon Geckos, the Zach Morris is, you know. I think to reference today, I think of uh, Hot Tub Time Machine, the first one there. And he's like, hey, man, you'll never guess where I'm calling you from. <laughs> right? I'm on a phone on the mountain. <laughs> Yeah, so wrong. So wrong. That was a great movie, by the way. Part two, not so much. No, part no. two. No. Part two's never are <laughs> as good as the first ones. But yeah, so we had we had the cell phones, and then of course that uh in the nineties, we thought nobody would have a cell phone, only the rich or the elite, but in the nineties, then all these cell phone stores start popping up everywhere. And then not only are we getting these cell phone stores, you go to seven eleven and they're hey, we've got a cell phone for eighty dollars, pay as you go. And you know, those Nokias that nobody could break. Yeah. Like, I mean, nothing. Listen, one does not simply walk into Mordor, but you could bring a Nokia phone in there and it survives no problem. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, yeah, so so we had that. Um, the hip-hop era came as well. We talked about that. Um, hip-hop and rap. Uh, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was Heavy D who said it, or I think it was actually Chuck D that said it from Public Enemy. He said that hip hop and rap are the CNN of the streets, which I think was very true, especially for the time. Then uh, let's 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 reverse time to 1979 TV show Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. On Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, I can't remember the name of the gentleman that was on, but he brought a Fairman machine on for the first time, 
and started messing around with the Fermi machine, then next thing you know, we've got hip hop. You know, um, oh, geez, what was his name? Grandmaster Flash. Not Grandmaster Flash. There was another one, too. <laughs> um, one, two, three. One, 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 one two, three. You, you hear his name. You hear that, that track all the time, and he was the first guy that does it. Something Chuck. Um, but anyways, uh, he's that's where it all got started. You know, we started with that, and it, it used to be, you know, then we got to the DJ where they'd start, hey, we're going to take two records at the same time, and I'm just going to scratch the records a little bit. <laughs> You know, uh, what are you over doing? the scene. Exactly. And people would be at these places and they'd be dancing and stuff and the, doing their thing. And then, next thing you know, people stopped dancing and started listening because the MC started talking. He started talking in rhythm with the music. Then he started rhyming with the music. And the next thing you know, we've got hip hop, we've got Grandmaster Flash, we've got Run DMC, we've got NWA, we've got Biggie, we got Tupac. Public we enemy. got Nas, we got Public Enemy, who Steve's been on stage with. Up on stage. Look it up. Just I'm telling you, he was there wearing <laughs> his poke high jersey, representing you know, Al actually, Bundy. Uh, speaking of Run DMC, I had my mind blown last week. The song uh, Mary Mary. Yes. I did, oh, yes. I did not know that that was a monkey song. Really? Really. That, so that's, oh, it's a remix of a monkey song. The, the chorus is Mary, yeah. Mary, yeah. Mary, yeah. Mary, why, why you bugging? Bugin'? Wait, that's the monkeys? The monkeys. Why you bugging? Look it up. Why you well, bugging? They may have had it that part, but the Mary, Mary, uh, yeah. Mary, Ch- Mary, why you bugging? Uh, Jen Ringma says, Sunday night sex show, icon of our generation. Of course Sujo you said Hansen. that, Jenna. Yes, it was Sue Johansson. And, of course, Jennifer Ringma said that one. <laughs> um, and welcome to the show as well, Dr. Elbows, and everybody else watching and joining in online. So, yeah. Th- we, need our, uh, we need our mirror there to look through. Yes, <laughs> our romper room our mirror. romper room, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good because, you know what, I always thought romper room was a Canadian show and another Gen X show, by the way. Um, I always thought that was a purely Canadian show. Um, but it, it was an American show. I had no idea. I know that we always got those shows because we we're so close to the border. But uh, I thought WUTV. Yes, WUTV and PBS Twenty One. <laughs> um, and there was another one too. Um, but Polka Dot Door, I think, is Canadian. I could yeah, be wrong, I, but I, I think that is only that Canadian. Was, yeah, yeah. TVO. Yes. Yes. Ahoy! 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 Thank you, Doctor Elbows. Um, come, so, come aboard. <laughs> we're expecting you. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there there were so many different things. Um, like there's so much things we 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 haven't even mentioned. You know, there was the Three Mile Island uh, scare, uh, where um, there was a meltdown, the nuclear meltdown at the nuclear plant out of Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania. Was that Love Canal? Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. And you know, and then like that was our Flint, our Flint, Michigan water crisis back then. You know, um, and it was sad and added to all of our fear of nuclear nuclear times and that's why so many you see so many gen xers nowadays talk about uh talk about uh nuclear and not liking nuclear energy is because yeah sure it's good and it's efficient but if something goes wrong uh fukushima just saying still leaking blinky the fish yeah blinky the fish is real in (laughs) japan right now because it's still leaking in the ocean there so um yeah it's crazy um but you know all in all the 60s, the late, the late 60s, 70s, um, and the 80s, the, the, the decades that we Gen Xers were born in, we were coming out of some really rough times. We were coming out of war-torn times. We were coming out of, uh, like, we are coming out of the Vietnam War for the guys in the 60s and 70s. For us in the, in the 70s and 80s, you know, we were coming off of the Cold War. People were literally letting their hair down. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I find that the 60s were the hippies, the 90s were us Gen Xers, and now seems to be the newest incarnation, these millennials, this era of millennials seems to be th- that next evolution from there um, but you know what, I'm just hoping hoping, because um, I, I really do see this generation as being a better generation than us when it comes to how much they care about each other and how much they care about this earth, um, so I don't see, and I'm hoping I'm right, but I don't see 
things like religion getting between us, things like race getting between us, things like whatever, sports. No, sports will always get between us. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do hold out a lot of hope uh, thanks to you millennials out there that are listening to the show. Um, so I don't want you thinking just because we talked about Generation X that, you know, we don't appreciate you as well. Um, just, you know, we are your forefathers. <laughs> we made the world the world it is today, and you guys will make it better. Well you, said, you, you are You are the 3M. They don't well make, they said. They don't make things. They make things better. Yes, yes. Are they the Trump looking for a better <laughs> America? Yeah, I went there. I went there. Uh, Professor Elbus does say it was. Polka Dot Doors was a Canadian show. Uh, Pokeroo and Marigold. I do want to say thank you to everybody that joined us today. I can't believe how many of you there were. Thanks for all the interaction and everything. Hope you love the show. Um, I'm Ryan for Steve Lambert. This has been Ratchy Radio on 103.7 FM, CFBU Brock University Radio, or online at cfbu.ca. And with that, we is out. Duncan from Madrid. Oh. Okay. <laughs> there wasn't very much rhythm to this dance. Stop it. <laughs>